What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, I wanted to cover a topic that I think a lot of people get confused with, and that is the difference between the cabin's total durability and your vehicle's total durability. And I also wanted to respond to the creator's video who respond to my video of me responding to his video. Yes, we have respawn inception going on right now. <laughs> Now, in his first video, he mentioned that if you upgrade your cabin for 10% more durability, your whole creation will get 10% more durability, including weapons, which was not the case. I already mentioned that. But then in his second video, his response video, he said that if you upgrade your cabin for 10% more durability, your whole creation will get 10% more durability, which is kind of true, but not really. Let me explain. Now, this growl cabin over here has 230 durability. These frames have like 240 durability, 140, and another 240. The wheels have 115 durability. So that should give us quite a nice amount of durability, right? Nope, wrong. We only have the cabin's durability. That is 230. Now, if you want to increase your cabin's durability on your vehicle, you can do that by adding normal structural parts to your creation. Now, I mentioned in my recent tutorial video, the 2023 one, there are four different types of structural parts. You got passive melee parts, you got normal structural parts, you got bumpers, and special structural parts. The special structural parts are these items, buggy floors, the gun mount, because they let damage through. If I add one of these, this is 38 durability. If I add one of these to my creation, my cabin has 230. I will still have 230 durability on my creation. Adding this gun mount will not increase its durability. Same goes for the bumper. The Terry Bull bar has 161. If I add that to my creation, I will still have 230 durability. And if I add a normal structural part like this APC roof part right here, it will increase my cabin's durability a little bit more. It will now have the durability of that APC roof and my cabin uh, summed up together. So now we have 371 durability. And of course, the more normal structural parts you add to your vehicle, you, the higher your cabin's durability. So right now we have 999 durability. And the testing that this creator did with the 10% more durability, I completely understand because if you don't know, you can easily miss it. He added a upgraded growl cabin for 10% more durability. So he thought right now he has 10% more durability on everything because his cabin now has 1099 durability but that's the thing the durability icon you see down below is your cabin's durability not your vehicle's total durability it's mentioned somewhere in cross out tutorials and i mentioned it in my tutorial videos if you want to see your actual vehicle's durability you need to hover your mouse over here so right now my cabin has 1099 durability but my vehicle's total durability is 2948 points that's the big difference. And another way you can tell that the upgraded durability of the cabin does not affect structural parts, I'm gonna shoot it a little bit. Let's use a normal machine gun. Oh, shit, let's use two. This structural part has 141 durability. So by shooting it, it should fall off exactly at 141 durability. Not more, not less. So if we line up right here. See, 141 durability, it fell off. And now let's just, you know, just for testing purposes, let's use a normal growl cab, and this one does not have a perk, and let's do the same thing. Let's repeat it. It should also fall off at 141 durability. Let me just line up perfectly so I don't shoot other parts. See, falls off at 141 durability. Now again, if you upgrade your cabin for 10% more durability, it only affects the cabin's total durability. I know it's a bit confusing because, you know, you see the armor icon down below and you, know, you would assume it's your, you know, your vehicle's durability, but it's just for your cabin. If you want to see your vehicle's total durability, just click on the information icon and highlight your mouser or cursor over the armor icon. And you can see now right now it is 1946 because I removed a bunch of armor. And that 1946 is the durability of the wheels, the frames, the cabin, the guns, and the APC roof parts. And that's why, you know, usually at higher tiers, people will usually have their big old cannons like the Mastodon <laughs> mounted in the front because it has a ton of durability. It has uh, 1505 durability. So usually you'll see builds like this and use their guns as protection just because the cabin might not have that much. So right now this build has 3,337 durability while my creation itself, my cabin, has only 371 points. That's the difference. Now something else I want to try out and see is the difference between cabin's durability buff or cabin's resistance to damage buff. I tried it out once before on the channel, 
but I did not add any durability to the cabin. So right now we got a growl cabin that has resistance to damage. We got a bunch of panels here and we got three protector machine guns. So let's see what the difference is. I'm going to have them side by side, one for durability, one without any perk and one for resistance to damage. Okay, the protectors had too much spread. So right now we got gun gunners and they should get more accurate the longer we hold down the fire button. So let's try it out now. Now I cannot see the results right now because I'm recording, but last time the durability buff and the resistance buff basically did the same thing. Maybe like one frame difference, but back then I did not add any cabins durability, but maybe now it's a little bit different. So we'll have to see. Now, since we are on the topic of cabins and durability and we're doing some testing, I want to check out a few more things or I want to show you guys a few more things. Now in the video where I played this thing, I mentioned that I did not like these types of builds and I did not say why. Well, it's because the cabin is exposed. Back in the day, like a year and a half ago, builds like these were meta, basically Clan Wars meta, with Nova Cabin, Cabin Exposed, and Bigram Legs. Uh, this is the Nova Cabin, by the way. It has a shield, and if somebody shoots you with a projectile, you can you know, block it with a shield. If you do not break the enemy shield, the reload is like 20 seconds. Let's see, yeah, 20 seconds. But if you do break the shield, the reload is only six seconds, which is really annoying in Clan Wars. Now, people struggled against creations like this, but then I messed around with the structures and made videos about it. And that's basically when the meta died. So I wanna show you guys, this build has what? 2,861 durability. But if we shoot it with destructors, it will absolutely melt. So I was basically using this thing, but I made a stupid mistake using it with the Hadron Cabin because I thought the reload will help me out more. But nope, the Photon Cabin is a little bit better with Destructors. So the first shot, that's 1600 damage. That's half of his health already. And the second shot, he gone, man. He gone. So Destructors were a good counter against builds like that. Now, let me show you something else that is interesting. All right, I made a funky vehicle right here. Now, in some of my older videos, I mentioned that I do not like it when my vehicle has their cabin exposed because it dies quicker. And, you know, there were some disagreements in the comment section. The only cabin you should have exposed is the Ermac cabin because of its bird. But otherwise, it's a lot better to have your cabin, you know, hidden very well. Let me show you guys an example. So right now, our cabin has 230 durability and these panels have 141 durability. So what I'm going to do now is shoot my cabin until it's burning. So that means our durability should be like 10, maybe 100 durability and then shoot off all these panels individually. And you'll see that they will still have their full durability. So let's shoot the cabin until it's like super low or maybe on fire. That means it's like super duper low. A few more shots should suffice. Yep, there we go. Now it should have like 100 or 10, maybe 50 durability. Now I'm gonna shoot these in panels individually and you'll see that they'll still have their 100 and I think 41 durability. 140, I think it had 140, my mistake. And if you shoot this one, I gotta be careful not to shoot other, oh shoot, I, oh man. That one's gonna be less because I stopped firing. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I don't wanna like penetrate my things. So let's, yeah. 140, see, that's what I mean. And that's why I don't like my cabins exposed when I'm making a vehicle. Now this panel is 141 durability, but we shot it off at 140. I'm not 100% sure on why that is. Also, if you hide your vehicle or if you hide your cabin behind armor, if the armor loses its durability, you know, it will go through and, you know, hit the thing behind it. Unless it's a cabin. Cabins don't let damage through. And that is why I don't like to have my cabin exposed. And that is exactly what happened in these clips right here. Me their soul. Yeah! Double kill. <laughs> so even though my creation had 4,000 cabin durability, that dust cabin just messed me up in one good hit. And if you go to my channel and watch that specific video, I also tested it out. If you hit the cabins from the back or any other place where there's normal structural parts, the dust cabin cannot do that. But if you get a direct hit to the cabin, 
you'll you'll get messed up. So yeah, guys, that's about it. That's the difference between your cabin's total durability and your vehicle's total durability. Now the creator did reach out. He mentioned that he reached out, and I did see the email today. <laughs> Was a bit late though. <laughs> he asked in for some information about Crossout because he's new to the game. He said he had a thousand hours, but in Crossout that are noobish numbers. But yeah, I am Lord JB Rider. I have Crossout knowledge flowing through my veins. I am Crossout. But, you know, I'm super duper busy, so um, I'll reach out to him. I'll respond to him in terms of knowledge and things I need to discuss with him. Um, I don't know, man. There's a lot, a lot of stuff to talk about. The devs keep changing things and, you know, I'll help out where I can. And maybe on Discord, maybe you can make videos. I don't know. I don't mind that at all. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll let him know. I'll let him know. Now, he also mentioned that selling his Catalina and getting three growl cabins and fusing them, that was his personal decision. That was not advice for new players. But the way he placed it in the video, it looked more like advice that you want to give other players instead of just his personal decision. But, you know, we saw that and he recognized what he could have done differently. Now, of course, it is his personal opinion on what you should do as a new player. And I have my personal opinion as well. But you as a player itself should do your research before you make a choice on what you want to do. Now, we all know Crossout is one grindy game. One bad investment will set you back weeks, maybe even months. And that's why I, you know, I usually care about... <laughs> that's why I care about new players. I just reminded the comment that I saw on this, <laughs> this video. There was a comment saying that JB farms new players <laughs> for video views. But yeah, dude, I, I farm new players. You think top players like Diamond League players watch my videos for advice? No, they know everything already. And they're super rich already. So new players are is basically my audience. New and veteran players, not the pros. The pros don't watch my videos. Basically, my videos are just for entertainment purposes. And I try to show you guys as well what is good, what is meta, what is bad. My opinions on certain weapons, new packs, and also give you the news. Now, I know I don't make a lot of my own vehicles anymore. I use mostly use the exhibition. But, you know, I got a lot of requests from people to try out their builds or improve them. And I want to make my own builds. I used to do that for the first year of content creation but I just don't have the time anymore. Like I was making builds. I was making three different builds every week and I just ran out of ideas and people are way more creative than me. I can still build, but there's a plethora of builds on the exhibition to, for me to try out and show to you guys. So that's why I do that. And to be clear, guys, I am not the best cross out player or the best builder. I know a lot, but I don't know everything. The only reason why I called out the other creator is because he was saying things that were completely wrong. But yeah, these were some interesting videos to make. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, I hope I earned your subscription. Also, follow me on Twitch because I stream on the weekends. Uh, this weekend, I'll probably go live on Twitch on Thursday. I'll stream on YouTube and Twitch on Friday and Saturday if I have the time. Yep, and if you do all of that, you can see that as your good deed of the day, and you might win a million dollars. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Peace!